Welcome everyone, I'm Kimberly Boschman, and this is the Intentionally Intuitive Podcast. Before we get into the reading, I just want to mention that I do have a few new services available, a couple new offerings. Um, I'm going to leave the information in the description box below. You can click on the link and again, read more into it to see if it's something that speaks to you. Also, this of course is a general reading. So if you would like a personalized reading, then of course, book some time with me and we'll take a deeper dive into your own personal energies. Okay, so as always, first we're going to look at the energy for the collective. And remember, when I say collective, that includes you, that includes me. <laughs> we're all part of the collective. So when I go over the, the collective energy, it's, it's energy that has the potential to influence influence us individually as well as collectively. So it's actually really important information. So first I'll go through that for August, and then I will get into the specific life path forecast. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we are looking at August 2021, and August ushers in a 13-4 cycle. So this is a four universal energy. So collectively and individually, we could all feel the influences of this energy in a myriad of ways. 13-4 energy, there's so much I can say about this energy, so I'll try to keep this as, as brief as possible, but there's just so much potentially to come in this month, so I want to make sure you're aware of it. So 13-4 energy is the, the vibration of the Divine Feminine and Mother Earth. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind as we move through this reading. The Divine Feminine, of course, being an energy. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, we all have Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine energies from within. And there's also those Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine energies without. So just kind of keep that in mind. But 13-4 energy is the vibration of the Divine Feminine and Mother Earth. So at its core, this energy is very intuitive, very nurturing and receptive energy. However, <laughs> it's very nuanced in its layers and you sort of need to sift through those layers to reach that vibration. And so what I mean by that is think harmony through chaos or harmony through conflict. So yes, this is a very nurturing and supportive, beautiful energy, but it's also a bit of sort of tough love at first. This 13-4 energy will, in one way or another, show us exactly where our mess is and insist that we take responsibility for it and clean it up before we can essentially move forward. So it's like needing to do our chores first before we can go outside and play. <laughs> so if there are deeds left undone within your life or faults within the foundation, this energy will highlight those areas and really push you towards sort of making the appropriate adjustments so that you don't remain in an unhealthy cycle. So this is a very practical, real world, grounded energy. We are all sort of really looking at the tangibles here. Relationships, career, actions, material goods, resources, laws, belief systems, structures, including our own personal structure, i.e. our body, mind, and spirit, right? So during a 13-4 cycle, we're really being faced with the polarities of our own personal experience, and we're being asked to find our own harmonious center within those polarities. So you may see things surface this month personally, as well as on the global stage, that again, are those polarities and we're being asked to find that center. So when you're faced with some kind of polarization that makes you feel off kilter or out of sorts energetically and physically, that is an indicator for you to work on finding the balance that equalizes the energy for you, 
okay? You don't have control over the external, but you do have control over finding your own center and, and, and sort of internalizing and realizing what that feels like for you. And yes, you're probably going to fall off that, you know, from that center many times, right? As you move forward. But at least you'll have an understanding of what that center feels like and you can continue to find your way back to it. Finding your center will be personal for you and unique for every person, right? So it may take a little bit of trial and error, but basically that's where the work lies and where the energy is trying to steer you towards. So figuring out where that center is for you, okay, that's the work. So the nurturing, intuitive, loving, harmonious energy of this 13-4 cycle resides within that center space. So when you find that center, that's what's waiting there for you, right? And so, like I said, yes, we, we fall, you know, on either side of that center, sometimes well beyond that center, many, many times throughout our lifetime. And as we continue to progress and move forward and evolve, but it's in finding that center and finding that harmony and that balance and those calm waters that we realize again what it feels like and then how we we start to understand the process of, get, of getting back to that center when we start to feel polarized again okay and that this 13-4 energy is going to assist you in doing that so 13-4 cycles can initiate a karmic beginning of some kind or some kind of karmic conclusion. So 13-4 energy can be very karmic, basically. So again, you may, you may see some kind of karmic situation initiated at this time or some kind of karmic conclusion or ending. So you may find people or experiences entering or exiting your life at this time. If they're entering, then you will begin a cycle of sort of working towards clearing that karmic debt. And the challenges that you face at this time will assist you in that process. If you're ending a karmic cycle at this time, you may see an influx of rewards coming in your way, right? And that person or experience that was involved in that karmic, you know, payment may exit your life or you may feel the energy sort of shift to where it's no lo to where it no longer feels quite so challenging or so much like work. So whether or not you believe in karma, our souls came here for growth and expansion and the soul contracts that we have with others help to facilitate and at times accelerate that expansion. So you may see a soul contract be initiated or completed at this time. 13-4 energy is incredibly beautiful and supportive energy. I just wanna reiterate that, especially in our evolution forward. It will, however, ask us to be very, very honest with ourselves when it comes to finances, resources, relationships, habits, mindsets, actions, and so on and so forth. So anything you've been trying to avoid up to this point could come in front and center of your awareness now to be dealt with once and for all, or at least initiated. And you know, the beautiful aspect of four energy is that you will most certainly, most definitely get out of the experience, whatever it is that you put into it. So you get to decide where within your life needs a little bit of tender loving care, needs some remodeling. This is a perfect cycle to begin, right? These, these energetic and these physical projects, this is a great energy, a great cycle to start those projects. So one final note I wanna make is this is a great cycle to make time to truly ground yourself to spend extra, extra time in nature and surround yourself with the many gifts and blessings of Mother Earth. Because again, this is her energy. This is her cycle. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the individual life path forecast for August. Life path number twos. Okay, so I pulled an animal spirit card for you all and you got echidna spirit. And what's interesting with this energy is this is really like this energy of trial and error and also 
this energy of like, don't judge a book by its cover. And what I think that kind of means is like, you know, what you see might not be the full story type thing. And I, and I feel like it's associated with your ideas. And so I feel like this month for you all is going to be very exploratory, exploring your ideas, exploring what comes in, trial and error through those ideas, right? Like the idea comes in, you take action and kind of like explore the idea and see what comes of it. And, you know, some of those ideas are going to work, some of them aren't. And that's okay. Again, it goes back to that sort of trial and error so that you can so whatever you choose to use in order to build that solid foundation with that collective four energy that we've talked about at the intro you know whatever you actually whatever materials you actually choose to use to build your foundation will be the ideas and the energy and the 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 materials that actually work and so, you know, again, when I talk about trial and error, that's sort of what I mean. It's like, I feel like you're going to have some experiences this month that will give you an opportunity to test a few things out, to have ideas come in and then test them out. And some of them might not work. And that's okay. That's not a failure. That just means they don't work. And so don't in continue to invest energy into them. So this could also be around, it's interesting, I'm also getting this energy around like communication. And so it may be that there might be some kind of relationship where the two of you just can't seem to get on the same page and you've tried different times to do so. And it's kind of like, keep trying is, is sort of what I'm, what I'm hearing. It's like, you, you'll figure it out. Like you'll figure out the type of communication that works for that relationship. Um, but again, it's through trial and error. So you're working with humans. And so it's kind of like, and they're working with you. So yeah, just getting this energy of like, don't judge a book by its cover because just because something didn't work out doesn't mean that it's not meant for you. There just might be a different way of going about it, right? And so same thing with like, if you're trying to build something energetically, physically, spiritually, whatever, you know, it's not always going to work on your first go. And so that's where that trial and error comes in and don't necessarily judge it right off the bat if it doesn't work out. I know that sounds kind of cryptic, but it's like, it's just kind of, I think you'll see what I mean as you move through the month, but it's just like, I think experiences will present themselves to you this month and just keep an open mind and just, you know, move through the experience and see what works for you and what doesn't. And the things that don't release them, because again, don't continue to invest energy into something that's, that's crumbling, that's not working. Okay. So I broke the month down into four weeks and the very first week is this very like um, almost sort of like reclusive energy of like going within and just really taking some time off for yourself. This would be a great time for a staycation or an opportunity to go, I don't know, maybe camping on your own or something like that, or, you know, some, some, some downtime with yourself. Okay. If you can do that and it doesn't have to be like long-term, like the whole week, but Definitely try to carve some time out for yourself at the beginning of the month to go into contemplation mode, to go into maybe a deep meditation, to, you know, really commune with the earth, with nature, um, with that energy, that divine feminine energy of stillness and surrender. And, you know, without any kind of specific goal in mind, and maybe just journal about what comes in for you, because I feel like you'll get some deep insights, I believe, at this time. But again, it's through the stillness that you'll be able to recognize the messages when they come in and then do something with them, right? So just getting this very like sort of calming, quiet energy at the beginning of the month. Um, and it's something that you may have to enforce yourself. Like you might have to actually literally carve out the time so that you can have this space to, to sort of really lean into and surrender into the stillness. But just definitely getting this this energy of like contemplation, maybe some um, alone time, some solitude, and being okay with that, and just being okay with spending that time on your own in contemplation and in solitude, as you sort of dive deeper within yourself. And again, I feel like 
what comes in for you at this time, I would explore every option, every opportunity, every insight, okay? Um, Because I think they're all going to hold something for you. Again, they might not all work out for you, but what's interesting is as we move into the second week, I can actually see how like that contemplation at the beginning of the week actually does bring in a lot of insights for you and a lot of maybe potential ideas and opportunities. And so it's interesting because that second week, you're, you're really being asked to, again, explore your options, but be very decisive in what you choose, okay? So keep an open mind and explore everything that kind of comes in without investing all of your time and energy into each and every one, right? Like you don't want your energy to become scattered. You really want it to be very focused, but you also want to be open to everything that's kind of coming in so that you can make an, a very decisive decision as to whether you want to use whatever that is, that resource. So again, it goes back to Echidna's message of, you know, without fully investing into each idea or each opportunity, if you have, if you're able to try to get as much information about each idea, each opportunity, each resource before making some kind of very firm decision, okay? I think that the more you can explore your options, the more you will feel very confident in your final decision, if that makes sense. So I do kind of see like a bunch of different ideas coming in, a bunch of different opportunities at this time. And I don't necessarily, like I said, I don't think you're supposed to make a a firm decision right at this moment. I think you're supposed to explore and again, sort of keep an open mind. Um, So yeah, I think that you're gonna have to make a decision down the road, but I think exploring your options is really going to serve you at this time when it comes to that point where you have to make a decision. (laughs) Okay, so third week. This is interesting because it's almost like there's definitely some kind of communication coming in at this time, some kind of... um, some kind of clarity coming in for you that allows you to move forward and release something that's been holding you back. So um, like if there's any kind of energetic tie that has been sort of holding you back and it really, honestly, the word that keeps coming up is like a grudge. So if there's someone that you're holding a grudge against or if there's somebody that's holding a grudge against you and you've tried to communicate, you've tried to make it work, Um, This is kind of where it comes in where I was talking about with Echidna about trying different, trying different um, approaches when it comes to communication with this person or these people. I really feel like that's coming in this third week where you're going to have opportunities to make adjustments, but, but kind of don't give up yet, right? Like kind of keep trying and figure out through communication how best to communicate with that person, right? Like Like maybe ask them what they need and then articulate to them what you need or whatever the case may be. But definitely seeing this opportunity for you to have, you know, some kind of open dialogue with this person or these people to try to figure out some kind of communication that works so that you guys can move on. So that you you're so you don't keep getting stuck in this tug of war of like misunderstandings and, you know, just being misunderstood. So I feel like you're going to have an opportunity to address that in this third week. Um, So just be open to it. I think if you're open to it and open, you know, those lines of communication and kind of put the the pride in the back burner, right? Like this, there, there needs to be like, you both need to come to the table or you all need to come to the table with an open mind and without the need to be right, <laughs> right? So so if you can do that, I think that you'll make a lot of head, headway. This feels like it's work-related. So it could be like with colleagues or something like that. If you're, if there's some tension at work or, you know, or even like, I don't know why high school is coming in, right? So like if, if you have a child who is in school or if you're listening and you're in high school or college and you're just, you know, there's a situation where there's, there's just some bad energy there. This can be an opportunity for you to step up and try to open those lines of communication and try different ways of communicating with these people. Because, you know, again, at some point, I feel like in this situation, 
you all will figure it out. Um, it doesn't feel like one of those situations. And for some people, obviously, this is a general reading. For some people, it's going to be like, okay, we can't get, we can't see eye to eye on this. Like, we can't make this work. So that's the decision, right? And you just kind of move on from there. But I do feel like for many of you, this is going to be a situation where you all kind of find a way to, like, communicate in some way. It's kind of like if, if you had people in a room who all spoke different languages and you all kind of found a common language to work with, you know what I mean? Or a, co a common way of communicating um, without language, right? I don't know. For those of you that this resonates with, it'll make sense when it comes up. But uh, yeah, so it's just a, this message of like, find, find other ways to communicate or explore different options for communication because I feel like these people are sort of meant to be in your experience. It's just that you all haven't figured out how to communicate. <laughs> so once you figure that out, I think that you'll all work together really, really well. Uh, fourth week, this is interesting. I'm, I'm really seeing kind of like this, this need for expansion, this need for like, for growth, for exploring new things and expanding your mind, expanding your, your wisdom through travel or through reading, you know, books and traveling through books or whatever the case may be. Um, this is interesting because this is like, uh, it's kind of like this energy of like you're looking for some kind of expansion, some kind of growth or your soul is, and you're not going to find it in the spaces that you've always sort of visited. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to find it in the places you always frequent. You're going to find it in sort of a place that has is unchartered and you haven't explored before. So that could very well mean like, traveling like overseas traveling or traveling to another town or another state or whatever the case may be but it's kind of like again that opening your mind and being open to different options and so if if something comes up for you this at this time where you have an opportunity to travel or to work on a new team or you know to do something different that you haven't done before I think you're going to find a lot of enjoyment and a lot of fulfillment um, through that process. So again, just be really open to the opportunities that come in for you. Or if it's an opportunity to read a new book that you wouldn't normally read or watch a new show that you wouldn't normally watch, you know, someone suggests it to you. Just, again, have an open mind. Try it out. Just see. You don't have to, you don't have to stick with it, you know. But I do feel like there's a lot to be uncovered in the spaces where you haven't explored yet. So I feel like you might have an opportunity to do that at this time. And that has the potential to bring you a lot of joy. So actually really beautiful energies this month. I see like some really, uh, you have an opportunity to make a lot of progression forward in relationships. And so, you know, assuming that you're willing to try new things and, and find new ways of communicating. I think that that could work out really well for you all. So twos, I hope that it's a beautiful August for you all, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.